Oftentimes on this channel, we like to look ahead into the future to poke fun at people. There are dumb people on the internet every single day, and we like to find new ones and not present the old ones. But sometimes there are some people that are just too stupid for their own good that we've got to double back on them. So just two weeks ago on this channel, we talked about Lily, the white girl who said the N-word and was taking over right-wing Twitter for speaking her mind and being called out by the free speech liberals and I don't know. Remember her? Everybody I know who's married right now, married to broke-ass niggas. Um... And they don't care. We don't give a fuck about your money. Now, because the right wing conservative media picked that up, they decided that she was going to be the next poster child, or at least that's what she thought it was, because she decided to go on a whole media spree afterwards. And her first stop was on Infowars, and it was also an ugly look. I don't think it's actually about what they think. I think it's um, victimhood is very, very profitable these days. Let's be real. There's not a lot of racism in this country. There is racism in other countries, but I won't mention that. We're talking about America right now. You know, people can take a word out of context and they love to do that. And they, so they have to have a racist. So I'm a perfect racist for them. You know what I mean? Lily, I've got breaking news for you. You're not even the perfect racist for the actual racist. Now quickly, right wing media snapped her up and they were attempting to put her as the face of the new election season that was coming up. You can even see her with a picture of Sneeko here. What appears to be like the RNC or something like that, showing that these are the new faces of the right-wing media. And I'm not gonna lie, if you have these faces as your new faces, then you've got a problem on your hand. Yeah, and I met this girl too, and uh, she did say this before. And th the reason I took a picture with her is because like, one, she's a woman. Like, do you really take a woman's opinions that seriously? I don't. Women are easily swayed, especially like white Christians in America. They're gonna have this, this point of view. And I heard uh, from people that she she took this back. I do not think that she would say this today. She probably was brainwashed by, by the Fox News. Like, So already in that short time, the veil, or some would say cloak of racism and white supremacy and all these other things has been coming down on her. They did a deep dive on her page and her background and stuff like that, and they found out that she has a baby. But that baby just so happens to be half black. Yes, not a 100% white baby. And of course, they're not gonna like stuff like that. That doesn't fit their 100% pure identities. And trust me, those people on that side of the internet are quick to call out a liar and a grifter, especially when you have the same tactics. You're gonna try to infiltrate these spaces, you're gonna make video content, you're gonna for the boys, say something bad, be vulgar, be aggressive. I mean, they've got the blueprint down packed already. So naturally they're gonna call her out for a lying. You're a lying bitch. You have the tweet in the nest. <laughs> what are we talking about? So, I'm looking at a tweet right now that somebody sent me. It says, uh, from your old Lily Coleman account, it says, don't disagree till you've read it. I dated an Iranian and a former Muslim, and he will be the first person to tell you Islam is not a religion of peace. Sent March 26, 2019 from your Lily Coleman. Well, account. W that guy, because he beat the shit out of her if you read in between the lines. They probably had sex. I'll, I'll, put, that no, honestly, I'll I, put it up in the I'm being honest about everything. So if you don't want to believe me, that's fine. Like I may have sent that, but I genuinely do not um, remember it. And that's probably because I'm stupid, but I've never claimed oh to be my smart. God. Can you confirm that was your account? I mean, it's, I had made a bunch of old accounts and then delete. Or, <laughs> oh my God. Right, that's <laughs> a little non-committal. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that. disagreeing. It's, up in the it's nest. probably my account. Did you date the Iranian or not? I have dated three people and they have all been white people. So was it, a, was it a white Iranian Muslim? No. Listen, Lily, if you're gonna get in the ring with the real racist and take on the real problems in America, you gotta come correct. You gotta make sure that your past is well, well, well vetted, you know, done your due diligence, deleted all the profiles, don't have Lily's alt account 212 as your alt account name. You gotta be better at this. Now, what Lily is doing is nothing new. We know about grifters in each and every platform, but specifically on a political year like this, an election year where Donald Trump is going up up against Joe Biden, these people are going to become ever more polarizing. Okay, we got a problem in this country, and it's people not getting married, not putting a ring on it, and not having kids. Hey, people not having kids, you are some stupid motherfuckers out there. Birth rate is declining, and what are you doing? You're getting married? Like, why even bother fucking getting married, you loser? We're seeing them take on talking points that have nothing to do with their sphere or whatever the case may be, and using it as a jumping board to get their shit off. Look at the case of Caitlin Clark. All the things that they've been talking about this year have nothing to do with basketball, but more so about her race, her identity, and what that means for the future of this country. You even got politicians like Ted Cruz talking about the Olympic team because they don't include Caitlin Clark. This has nothing to do with anything but getting a grift off and appealing to voters. Here's the reality. It's Tommy's right. It's not just race, though. It's also sexuality. Caitlin Clark is a white heterosexual woman in a black lesbian league, and they resent and are jealous of all of the attention and the shoe deal that she got. And we've even seen content creators like Sneeko and 
and Young Don hop into these realms as well. But to be honest with you, and I'm glad Sneeko did this, they realized that you can only grift but for so long. Like after doing this and sitting there circle jerking, it becomes tedious and tiring. IRL streaming is what I want to do now. You can only do this for so long. And let's be honest, the red pill is, uh, is dying. It's over because like there was a lot of hype around this like, Oh, the Matrix! And then, like, you, you, there's a, this excitement, there's hype around it, and I got in at the right time, hit the wave at the right time. I was red pill raging when the red pill was blowing up, so it was perfect, you know, screaming at a camera, WAKE UP! WAKE UP! And then now, like, okay, you know? Live life now. Can't be screaming at a camera about Satan every single day. And Sneeko's not the only one making a pivot. We've seen just pearly things in the recent times go from her ultra-aggressive, I'm doing stuff, men, women, dating, trying to dispel these narratives, baby mamas, X, Y, and Z, to now she's on a sporting platform where she's comparing which NBA players look better than the other NBA players. Next up, we have Derek White, cancer, 6'4", 190 pounds. He went to Colorado. Yeah, cancers are the worst. Uh, I'm like, just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So they're compatible with you, your Scorpio. <laughs> he might be a Pisces, though, which is why they may be a match made in heaven. That's your husband. Something totally out of her wheelhouse. But ultimately, grifting gets old. Grifting gets tiring. And people can sniff an industry plant from a mile away. Even that Bobby Altoff girl's rise and fall was quick as hell because people understand genuine and authentic people now more than ever. Now, Just Pearly Things and Bobby Altoff aren't the only examples of grifters. Even one in the right wing space, Clay Travis, has been known to be a grifter and has been called out a couple times. This is him back in January 15th saying, the Republican primary race is over, Donald Trump has won it, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek ran their hardest, but they weren't close. It's time to rally behind Trump and beat Joe Biden. No one can beat Trump in the primary. It's wasted money. Spend it to beat Biden. Now, the internet is always going to internet because they caught Clay Travis at a Ron DeSantis presidential election kickoff event and caught him being a speaker at the event. Like, this is crazy. And furthermore, about him speaking at the event, apparently he was caught being at the investor meeting where he's backing him financially. Mind you, this may be him saying, I wasted my money all the time, you know, backing these people or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, these people, especially these people on the extreme sides of the world, can see when a grift is right in front of their faces. You literally can't fool these people. Another guy who recently got caught up in a whole grift scandal was the Ninja Turtle guy from Pop the Bloom video a couple weeks ago. He went on to start a whole GoFundMe talking about how he was displaced from his job, how he was just some sincere man, etc, etc. But it turned out that not only did he have an ex who exposed him for being a deranged man, but also he never provided proof because people like MTR were going to bat for this man. He could never ever provide any sort of proof. Then he thought he had the ultimate money come up because he put a whole bunch of nonsense and gobbledygook on GoFundMe only for him to raise the money and then them freeze the account because so many people reported him as a liar. He thought he could infiltrate into the spaces where he could gain sympathy and get a lot of money off, but ultimately he ended up being a fraudster as well. The common theme is most of these people aren't necessarily even doing anything unique. For Clay Travis, you end up on the losing team, you grift to the winning team. For the Ninja Turtle guy, you get on a public platform where you're getting bashed for your views and your opinions, you come out saying you got fired, and then you start a GoFundMe. And the same thing for the N-word girl. You get up there, you say your racially divisive thing, talk about how they're silencing you, the right-wingers that are extremely extremists on the content creator side get behind you because they also believe that freedom of speech is being attacked. You infiltrate or try to infiltrate the right-wing media. But the common denominator is everybody can tell when you're faking. So for Lily, I hope the 15 seconds of fame was worth it. I personally don't think so. That was up to you to decide and it sounds like you made the wrong decision because of course these people were going to use the internet to look into your history and find out if you were really a part of that racist life or not. Of course they were going to figure out if you had a baby by a black man or an Iranian man or whatever man that wasn't white. And of course they were going to test and see if you're values were real or true or if you really even believed in them. Hell, you are already standing on one leg because you were a woman and you know how they feel about women. They question them each and every day. But when you have such a shady background, authentic people, whether they are extreme Christians, extreme Muslims, black, white, NBA fans, WNBA fans, people want authentic people in their spaces. They don't want people to come in and grift and they're going to put you to the test. I hope it was worth it because you can't go back to where you came from now with this type of track record. I would just block her. She's going to end up on the edge of the curb anyway. Let me know what you guys think about these grifters in these places and spaces. Hell, even the city girls can't get off that hood ratchet grift anymore. Y'all are lovers.